Hey guys, I'm John from Titan. I'm here with my son Peter. Uh, we're enjoying the day. Father's Day is an important day. I get to spend time with my little man and my family, but it also makes me realize how important my health is. And the reason is, is so I'm around for Peter. So he grows up and I can see his milestones through his life. Without my health, I won't be able to see that at all. And I always want to feel good. I want to feel optimal, you know, when I'm living, I'm here on this earth and being around Peter. So I have the energy to be around him, to participate in some of the different things that he likes to do. I also want to feel good because if I feel bad, I'm not going to want to do anything. And uh, it's just going to put me in a bad mood. So that goes right along with feeling good too, right? So with Father's Day approaching, I want to make sure all you guys out there are checking your health, making sure your hormones are on point so you feel good, you look good on the inside and the outside, and you're able to spend time with the important ones, your family, your son, your daughter, who's ever most important to you. So this is just a message from us at Titan Medical Center. I appreciate it, and I hope you guys have an awesome Father's Day. Thanks, guys. guys today I want to talk to you guys about some tips and tricks to help you guys stay motivated and stay secure to your exercise routine or program so these were five major important things that I wanted to point out to you guys that might help you guys stay motivated and stay on track to that program so you guys get long-lasting results okay so let's go over those five different ones the first one do it for yourself okay so this is really important the only person that's going to take themselves to the gym and do the workout is you. There's nobody else that's going to force you to go there and do the reps and put in the work. So ultimately it comes down to your motivation and what you really want to do. So if you really are motivated and you really want to get healthier, you want to lose weight, or you want to put on lean muscle mass, whatever the goal is, you have to be accountable for yourself. So that is staying motivated and going there and doing the work for yourself, okay? The next one, number two, mix up your workouts. If you're getting bored or you think that you're just going through this boring routine and just going through the motions, mix it up, okay? If you don't know any other exercises, then if you're going to a, you know, a big box gym or whatever it is, why don't you ask one of the people there that work there about another exercise? Maybe a fellow trainer that's there, somebody that you've seen that, that looks like they know what they're doing, and you guys can incorporate maybe some different exercise routines. You know, maybe it's a different form of equipment, a different movement, you know, whether it's a compound movement, all these different things will help you guys get the results and stay motivated at the same time. It's fresh, it's new. You guys can add these up, switch them up, mix them up, and that's important because you guys will never get bored, all right? Number three, bring a friend or have somebody that's there as your partner to keep you accountable and to keep you on track. Make sure it's somebody that's not going to divert your attention or take it away from what you're really supposed to be doing. And that's working out or doing exercise to help you guys get healthier, look better, and feel better. So make sure that that partner or that person you bring is motivated on the same level that you are to get healthy and get right. Okay, it's really important because you don't want to bring somebody there that's going to just divert your attention and you're just not there doing what you're supposed to be doing. It's just a waste of time, okay? Number four, keep it real with your goals, okay? That's a big mistake that I see a lot of people out there doing. So the first thing you need to do is, is make the goal achievable. But don't make a goal that's going to be just so easy to hit. You're not even going to have to try. You have to put effort in. So you want to make these goals write down these goals you can hit them with you know right when you want to do them and write you know how you're going to do them you got to make a plan the plan is key but the goals that you hit will help you go on and you'll be excited and more motivated once you hit each individual goal so it's really really awesome which brings me to my fifth one tracking your results so before you start your exercise program it's always good to get 
measurements of your body, your body weight, your body fat, if you possibly can. There's a lot of places around you possibly that might be doing this or possibly your gym can do this for you. That way you know where you start at and you know where you're at when you do the tracking. So whether you're tracking yourself every 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days, you guys will know how far you guys have came. Or maybe you have it, and you need to kick it up a notch in the goals that you were writing down, okay? So results are what we're ultimately after. That's the end game. The end result, the long-lasting results is what you're looking for. So you want to track them and see how long it's taking you to get those results. Maybe you could do some extra things to expedite those results, okay? And that's where you could possibly look at a professional helping you with training, a nutritionist, or maybe it's your hormones or something like that that's keeping you down. You might be doing everything right, doing all these steps, eating correctly, sleeping, training, doing everything you're supposed to and not hitting your result. You'll know this with tracking your results. And if you need help, you can contact somebody that will help you out. So I hope these tips help you guys. There's some major ones that I've incorporated myself and then I also give out for, you know, when somebody asks me, hey John, you know, like what do I do? How do I start the gym or how do I keep motivated? Like I don't I feel like I'm burning out. And I give them these five tips. And it usually reinvigorates their workouts. And when they're reinvigorated, they're more motivated. And when they change some of these different things, they might expedite the results and they might be doing something they weren't doing before and that helps them out down the road. So take these tips and tricks, utilize them, incorporate them, and I hope they get you the long lasting results that they've gotten me. So these are just five tips and tricks to help you guys stay more to your exercise. You guys stay tuned, we got more to come. Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about this month in particular, which is June. And if you guys don't know, it's Men's Health Month. Yes, Men's Health Month. And if you're a female out there, you might be thinking, well, this really doesn't have anything to do with me. I can just turn off this TV or computer or whatever I'm watching this on, right? Well, it really does have to deal with you. Let me tell you why. Because you probably know somebody that's your dad, brother, cousin, you know, uh, a loved one, like a boyfriend or a husband or somebody that you know as a friend, that's male, right? So Men's Health Month affects us all, just like Females Health Month. And there's, there's something like that just has just directly for females. So this month, we have this directed just towards males, and that's what it is. And there's a lot of things that go along with men's health, okay? So let's talk about some of the important things, men's health, um, and what guys should be looking for in this month. And they should be going over a lot of different testing. So a number one thing is cardiovascular. So heart disease is on the rise. And we know that males usually have strokes or heart attacks more often than females do. We also know that prostate, because males only have prostates, we know that prostate cancer is on the rise too as well. So prostate is male driven. And prostates can be enlarged. They can mess with urinary function. That's why I said you could have cancer and they have to take out the prostate, which is not a good situation. Uh, it's actually happened to one of my cousins. I know what he's had to go through. It's really serious. And maybe some of you guys out there have had to go through this with your loved one. Okay, it's not fun, but you need to make sure that you're checking. And there's at certain age points where you can do blood tests, PSAs, and then after that, you want to do a physical test. Okay, and a lot of guys don't like that, but hey, it's something that we have to do to make sure that we're in good health. And the reason we want to be in good health as a male is because we want to be around A, for our own life, B, for our family and loved ones, uh, and, and C, I mean, just to be around, I mean, at that point. You want to be there and be able to experience things at the best optimal level of health. And that's really where we're going with this because a lot of guys I know, they're macho, they don't want to take care of themselves, they don't want to go see the doctor, they don't want to have to do these different things, these checkups, just to make sure they're okay. Because a lot of them, 
thinking like the old school way is, hey, listen, I'm not bleeding. I'm not dying. I feel all right. I don't need to go to the doctor or hospital. I don't need no checkups. When I die, I die. That's what it's going to be, right? That's the old school mentality. That's really not that smart. I mean, you know, being old school, like a Greek mentality, you know, I've dealt with this. I had kind of some part of my life, and then I started realizing as I got older that, hey, listen, I'm not Superman. I'm not invincible. I need to make sure that I'm checking up. And then priorities come into play. Like I said, family, your business, whatever it may be. These things are things that need you around and need you healthy. So the biggest thing is, is to find out if there's a problem in the beginning, early stages, so you can take care of it so it doesn't get out of hand. There's breast cancer. So breast cancer works for males and females. It's usually directed just at females, okay? But males can get it too. So this is something that you might want to check into, okay? With your doctor, primary care physician, so they can check you out to make sure that you possibly don't have breast cancer, all right? The next thing is, is quality of life, all right? So we want quality of life to be good. Now, if you're generally healthy and you don't have no problems, you might just be aging, there's some things that might affect you. That could be your sleep patterns, your motivation, your drive, your thinking. So are you foggy thinking? Is it not just, are you thinking about that word, just can't get it off the tip of your tongue? Okay, that happens to a lot of people. Libido, all right, so libido, as we get older, we know it starts dying out a little bit. Some of you guys would disagree out there. I totally understand. Um, you know, and then you have your overall body, your metabolism, your cardiovascular system. So these internal organs too, as well. And you want to make sure that everything's at optimal levels. And that's why blood testing is so key. And in this month, we actually have a special going on for Father's Day blood specials. So at that point, you can test everything, liver, kidneys, electrolytes, prostate, all your hormones. So we're talking about free and total testosterone levels, progesterone levels, estrogen levels, growth hormone levels, B12 levels. You might not think these things are so important, but they really are and they drive a lot of different things in your body and the way that it functions, okay? From the way that you feel mentally, your physical health, okay, your performance day to day, how you're acting towards your loved one, spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, whoever it is, all right, these things can change. And you know, usually the comments they make is, is you haven't been acting the same or something's wrong or is, is there something wrong? And they ask you, you're like, nothing's wrong with me. You know, and at that point, you don't even wanna to check to find out when there could be something that you could easily fix and you see it through a blood test. You know, it's not always diagnosing or looking yourself on the outside. On the outside, we can look pristine, we can look healthy, ready to rock and roll like a bull or a Greek statue, okay, or God. But on the inside, there could be some things that are going wrong, and it could be just a ticking time bomb. And then what, once one thing goes wrong, multiple things can go wrong after that. It could be like a domino effect. There could be other things that are silently killing you, like blood pressure, okay? Or your sugar levels, your, your glucose levels. These are things that need to be checked regularly. You also wanna check your cholesterol levels, your triglycerides, total cholesterol, LDL, which is your bad cholesterol, HDL, which is your good cholesterol, making sure that all these things are in the right ranges and working optimally for you. And we talked about these silent killers like blood pressure, okay, and sugar levels. Now, these things don't directly affect you when they're off right away. That's why we call them a silent killer, because over time they start damaging the body and doing more harm. And that's when you ultimately end up terminal, is when your body can't take any more. And it might be 20 years, it might be 30 years, it might take a longer time than you realize. And like, like I said, you look in the mirror, I'm running around, I'm healthy, and there's a lot of people that they were healthy one day and a week later have found cancer or were sick. Okay, and they didn't know anything until something really bad started happening. Like, I, I need to go, or a family member takes you in, or people have passed out and be taken in by ambulances. So there's different things that can happen to you that you guys should be prepared for and watch out for. And your family members out there, so if you're watching and you're concerned about your husband, your boyfriend, your son, anybody out there that's a male, you should really talk to them about it. It's Men's Health Month. This is something that you should bring up in conversation, you should talk about, Everybody should want to be healthy. Everybody should want to do a checkup. Now, I totally understand. Some people, they're really just jaded by doctors. They're jaded by the things that they get put through. They get poked, stuck. 
million tests, they don't get any answers, you know, and that's when you really have to push on that doctor or physician if there is something. Ultimately, they work for you. They are an employee of you. You guys are paying them, whether it's through insurance or out of your pocket. So ultimately, they should be working with you and for you to help you get the best health and benefits out of your life that you possibly can. So these are just some of the different things you should do for Men's Health Month. Like I said, we've got specials on blood testing. So a full meal package, instead of $200, is $130. That covers all the blood tests that I talked about. It's a very full in-depth panel. Okay, we're gonna have libido enhancer or bedroom enhancing therapies for males. We also have them for females too, but it's Men's Health Month. We wanna hook those guys up, make them as, as tight as possible, right? They wanna be the, the best tight they can. So not to say that they need any help, but hey, listen, if they can take it to the extra next level and, and do that for their partner, I'm sure their, ha their partner is not gonna be upset or uh, mad about it, okay? So these are just some of the different things that I wanna to talk to you guys about in Men's Health Month. It's very important to get checked up, like I said, for prostate, for breast cancer, for these different things, okay? Make sure that you as a male are taking care of yourself. Don't be too macho and say, I don't wanna do that or I don't do that because I'm a male. Listen, I'm as caveman as it gets, okay? But I still will do the right thing for my body and I'm not just doing it for myself. I'm doing it for my family. I'm doing it for my business. I'm doing it for my loved ones and people that care about me. Nobody wants to see you in a hospital bed, all right? Nobody wants to see you hurt. Nobody wants to see you sick. People wanna see you and they should want to see you at your best. And if they don't, get rid of them, get them out of your life. So you should be your best always or as much as you possibly can for yourself and for your family. So there's just some of the things I want to talk to you guys about. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Thank you. Hey guys, I'm John. I'm Sharice. And we're back with another Cupid's Corner, just for you guys. These are tips and tricks that me and Sharice have came up with over the years with our experience and our 12 plus years of marriage, kids, and the whole nine to help you guys reinvigorate, reignite, or just make better your relationship. So every week we come up with at least two different topics to go over for you guys. You know, some things that should help you guys in the ways of your relationship. So, the first one is don't let yourself go, Ugh. all right? What does that mean though? All right, so don't let yourself go means this. Many right? things, I guess. So when you first met your partner, you know, you looked a certain way, maybe physically, you are a certain way mentally, um, you know, vocally towards them and stuff like that. So don't let yourself go. So what happens is, is people get into relationships and they don't have to be married, but they get in relationships. And over a long period of time, they start getting very comfortable with their partner, which is great. You should be comfortable <laughs> with your partner, right? Yes. But when you sit down, you eat bonbons together, order Uber Eats and just do nothing all day. Oh no, I mean, let yourself go is this. So <laughs> you, learn, you are a certain way, after a certain amount of time, you just don't care about your physical appearance, the way you smell, what you do in the bathroom, um, all these different things about letting yourself go, right? Because you're comfortable around your partner. So if you're letting yourself go physically, maybe your partner over time might not find you as physically attractive. This is a true statement. All right. Now, not to say that your know, looks should be everything because that's very They're shallow. They're going to love you for you most of the time. And most of the time they will because real relationships that last or stand the, the, ti the tides of time yep. um, often have a mental connection right. or are very it goes connected beyond physical mentally. looks. Right. I believe but that. But physical, I do strongly believe that you have to have that physical connection on some kind of level in order to, you know, if you're going to get jiggy with it. You yeah, know? right? You want physical you get those connection. juices flowing, you, want, you know? You know, you, you want to, come on. I mean, everybody wants a good looking person. Yeah, and, and people have different, you know, what they're looking for is right. find what, what they find attractive. You know, what I might find attractive, the other guy next down the street might not. Yep. But generally, I mean, you know, when you first get together, you know, there's going to be some sort of attraction or a spark or some sort of chemistry that's bringing you guys together. Um, and then obviously, if you guys are in a relationship, you've probably been physical, right? And that's probably in the beginning. Were you more physical in the beginning or than you are now? Has that lessened up? And is there a reason why? You know, you should ask yourself that. 
You know, and it's always good to, to be honest with your partner. Now, don't make the common mistake a lot of guys have done to their girls or partners. Like, hey, listen, honey. You, they always ask. Presentation is this everything. Is the, this is the question. Honey, do I look fat? <laughs> I asked John that at least four or right, five so times a week. At obviously, least. you guys should know the answer right away. <laughs> no, honey, you look beautiful. <laughs> But, but when you bend over to tie your shoe, you but, have a couple rolls. But honey, but honey, listen. You know, I mean, obviously, maybe we can, we can get we we, we all can look better. We can do better, and that's when you might have to motivate them or do things along with them. You know, or you you myself might be falling out of shape, and you realize this, and you're like, I don't want to do this, or you don't. I mean, that's when you're starting to lose yourself because you don't care about your physical appearance. Mm -hmm. and, and not to say you should have to worry about your physical appearance. 24-7, 365, every single day, every single minute. I mean, you're around your partner, you should want to look your best, you should want to give your partner the best. Not just that, but don't you want to look good for yourself? Everybody wants to look good for themselves some too. Some people say no. Oh, I say yes, and I think or, most of you out there should want to look good for yourself. You know, some, some people have great self-confidence levels, whether, I don't care what they're wearing or what they look like, they think they look the best. Now we all know, because you know, if you went out in public, and you see something that's morbidly obese and like this little skinny, like extra small tank top and you know, some things are sticking out. They might not look their best. Mm -hmm. You know, these are just different things. Hey, listen, they might have the self confidence so they can wear that. And not to say it doesn't look beautiful or doesn't look good to somebody, but. Maybe she had it in high school and she put it on 20 years later. That's what, that's what it is. You yeah, know, things happen. So I mean, don't, don't lose yourself because you want your partner to have the best. Whether it's getting back to some physical exercise. Now, if you have injuries, you, you can't do all this physical exercise, there's something you got to be able to do, even if it's just a uh, nutrition or diet change. Mm -hmm. You know, that can that help. does a lot. That can help you as far as losing weight. If it's a mental thing, you know, that could be a hormone base. That, that could be something, you know, depression I'll give you guys an example. I'll give you guys an example because I'm skinny. Okay. To some degree anyway, my mind. <laughs> but when I first met John, I used to drink a Coke every single morning. Like that was my coffee. So Bad. I had, I, that's what I did. Okay. I did. So I had a big glass of Coke with ice and that was my coffee. And I used to drink Coke like it was going out of style. So, you know, a couple years go by, whatever. And one day I put on my bathing suit, get ready to go to the bay, you know, like go to the beach or pool. I can't remember where it was. And then I'm like, I don't know. Like, do you, I'm like, do you see this? Like, it kind of looks like cellulite. He's like, oh, might be that Coke you're drinking every morning. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, and he's, and he's like, he's not going to say, I told you so, even though he's looking at me the eyes, like, I told you so, this, the, I told you so face, but he's going to be like, you know, maybe you should cut out the Coke, even though I've been telling you for three years to cut out the Coke, you know? That's and right. so I cut the Coke out and sure enough, it definitely improved the way that I looked. So it's like little things like that yeah. can make a big difference. You know, drop the conversation. It not, might not just be about physical, but when you start incorporating some of these things, like losing the Coke, it's not just helping the physical appearance on the outside. That's healthy, healthy in, internal too. Mm -hmm. So health wise, you don't want them to be around for you or around with you for a long period of time. So you want them to stay healthy. And that's important. That's really important. So I mean, that's, that's just a great example. I mean, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. So you guys make sure you guys are doing the right things to look your best and don't lose yourself. And for present your it nicely, people. Yes. If you have to present <laughs> that physically for, for your partner, just talk to them, throw some tips, help them out, be motivated, do it with them, all right? Because mm -hmm. at that point, you guys are doing something together too, so it's creating more of a bond. bond. Yes. That's awesome. And you guys are accomplishing these goals together, so that's a great thing. So let's move on to our second topic. And this one is, is, is a pretty good one. You know, I've seen a lot of people over the years where this has affected relationships. So this one is leave the past in the past. Mm -hmm. That's a tough one. It's, it's a tough one. It definitely is a tough one. Now there's two sides to this coin. There's one where somebody has had something happen to them. They've been jaded, jaded. because of a past relationship where you're a guy or a girl. They've All men you. are like this. Oh. <laughs> There you go. I'm uh, just so, saying that's how it goes down, right? Come you know, on. This is Men's Health Month. All right. All right. So <laughs> you're supposed to be liking men here. What are we going on? All Listen, right. I only speak the truth. You guys know I only drop it exactly how it is. Okay. So this could happen with guys and girls, right? And something could happen in a past relationship that they're jaded with. And what happens with their future relationships? These people cannot leave the past in, in the past and they apply it to the new or future relationship. Mm -hmm. They've already put that person um, and a disadvantage in the relationship because they've applied what happened in the past with something that's totally different 
and automatically place it on this person. Mm -hmm. So that person has one strike going against them already. And every time you might be looking for these different flaws or want to be red flags, and they might not be red flags, but you might be looking at it like, well, this person did to me before, so this person is going to do it to me now, mm -hmm. which is never any good. So, I mean, if you've been cheated on in the past, broken up with, or something happened negatively with a past relationship, don't just apply it to your future relationship. Mm -hmm. If you really think the person is that much like the last relationship, move on. Move on, right? Move on. They should definitely move on. Yeah, right? you can't fix someone. Yes. You can't. You, you can't, can't fix, fix someone. You can't fix someone. A leopard can't change its spots. They want to want to change. And sometimes it can't happen if they really want to yeah, do it. Yeah, that's true. All right? Yeah, in very slim cases. The person yeah. has to be motivated. They can't be made. It has right. to be their own decision. decision. Right, right, right. Right? And if, they're, if they're, it's on them, then they'll do it. Just like anybody wanting to quit smoking or quit drinking alcohol or quit doing drugs or whatever it may be. It has to come from them and it starts with them. And then you can help them hopefully maybe finish it. Mm -hmm. The second side of that coin is, is if something has happened with your current relationship that you're in right now. And something has happened, but you've both agreed, right, to get over that subject, whatever it might have been. Mm -hmm. Then you bring it up and you're throwing it back in their face. Yeah, it's usually in the middle of a fight. Right. That's yeah. what happens. You get into a fight and you're like, well, remember when you do this? Yeah. Remember when you did that? Yeah. Yeah, you, you're bad. Yeah. So, so you're not leaving the past in the past. Yeah, you, you're regressing. If you both agree to you know leaving the past and you have to move on, you know together. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, you're never gonna get over it. You're gonna keep bringing it up, and it's always gonna be a problem. Mm -hmm. And that problem could be just the, the the first of problems that it may lead to more, mm -hmm. right? Because it can lead to a string of other things. Mm -hmm. So that's the big one. Leave the past in the past. There's a reason it's the past. Now, if it keeps continuing, it's not in the past, and you should do something about that too as well. But if it's in the past and you both agreed to get over it, don't just get stuck there. Get over it one way or another, whether you have to talk to that person or you know you, you guys want to do something or whatever it may be, get over it, move on, so your relationship can take on a new level and new heights. I okay? agree, 100%. So these are just some of the tips and tricks that me and Sharice have seen or incorporated or been through together. They want to share with you guys. Hopefully will help your guys' relationship be strong. If you guys have went through some of these different things and topics that we have went through or we have talked to you guys about and you guys incorporate some of this information and you guys have some success, let us know. Yeah, we'll share We'd it. love to know that stuff. We love to share great stories like that. If you have any topics or anything you want us to discuss or talk about possibly, DM us, let us know. Cupid's Corner every Sunday, 11 a.m. on the Tight Medical Health and Lifestyle Show. I'm John. I'm Sharice. And this has been another Cupid's Corner. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys.